You're watching World Insights still to come on the program. A possible icebreaker in Chile relations? What exactly does the U.S. business community expect from John Kerry's visit? The chairman of the American Chamber of Commerce in China with answers next. Welcome back. You're still watching World Insight with me, Tian Wei. John Kerry's visit is the first official trip to China by a ranking Biden administration official less than a month after the Anchorage meeting. The visit follows the release of the U.S. annual intelligence report on Tuesday that said, quote, China's effort to expand its growing influence represents one of the largest threats to the United States, end of quote. And of course, China disputed that. So despite the dire warning, could climate action be an icebreaker for frosty relations between China and the United States? What does the business community expect from Kerry's trip on that? I visited the office of American Chamber of Commerce in China and talked to the chairman, Greg Gilligan. Here's our conversation. Mr. Gilligan, good to see you. Thank you. Likewise. Busy springtime, uh, Secretary Kerry, who is now the special envoy for climate change representing the president, is in China this week. Now, from the business perspective, how much expectation do you have for this trip? We're very glad that Secretary Kerry is here um, in his new role as special envoy because to address uh, common concerns for environmental protection is something that is less controversial than many other issues in the U.S.-China relationship. So we kind of look at it almost as an icebreaker uh, event that will allow the two sides perhaps to find some commonality and ways to move forward together. Naturally, it's important for the entire globe because the U.S. and China are the two largest emitters of carbon dioxide in the world. So for the world to address uh, environmental protection, it's necessary that both the U.S. and China come to the table and find ways to help each other. Though there are a lot of details, uh, devils are in the details. So, Mr. Gilligan, some say probably now these days, uh, narratives is even more important than the content. Uh, what do you say? I think that uh, as long as governments allow enterprise to engage, that we can help to provide solutions. Mm, like what? Well, carbon neutrality, you mentioned a moment ago. And um, enterprise are already actively planning on how to improve carbon neutrality measures in their own business. We would maybe then go take it a step further and suggest how governments can appropriately regulate those efforts. At this point, we know it takes both sides to tango. But at the same time, it takes both sides to have the courage and wisdom to take the first steps of their own. Now, do you see that is happening, or Washington will have to wait until Beijing takes all the first steps before Washington do anything because of the so-called toxic political environment back at home? I think both sides are taking steps. We recently saw senior officials uh, with a meeting just a few weeks ago. And Which now, is quite a drama. Uh, yeah, there were some theatrics, but um, you know, both countries have domestic politics and they play to them. And then behind closed doors, uh, you know, perhaps there were some other things that allowed the meeting that's occurring these few days to, to happen. So uh, this is a step forward, just weeks after, you know, the drama that we saw on the news cycles of, uh, of that time. So I think there's plenty of reason to remain optimistic and to seek these um, commonalities. Mm. How much do you think of views, thoughts, ideas, suggestions from the business communities are being heard by the two governments. Let's just say MCM's ideas and suggestions toward the U.S. government. Well, we have a very active outreach program. Uh, previously, we used to call it the door knock. We used to go once a year or maybe twice to Washington, D.C. We would visit Capitol Hill, um, the White House, the administration, uh, think tanks, the academic uh, policy community, et cetera. Now, because of the COVID reality, we've moved it all online, which is to say that we can bring more people to the conversation, and the conversation can be longer, and it's easier to schedule. As such, we're getting, I would say, you know, warm welcomes from uh, U.S. government 
in setting up these discussions. And we're going to take those, and we're also going to share uh, our talking points and some of the issues and uh, things that we identify with the China government. So I think that the U.S. government is receptive, but it is true that the atmosphere has changed. I don't mean to paint too rosy a picture. Uh, things are challenging in the U.S.-China relationship as bad as they've been in decades. So it's even more important now, like it was 50 years ago with ping-pong diplomacy, for us to remain engaged stay in these conversations and try to find a way forward. Mm. I understand recently there are at least two meetings being arranged. One is by the NDRC, which is an important uh, uh, government entity of China yes. on the planning and also implementation of the planning uh, between them and also the representative from the U.S. business community, as well as a a, a encountering online between the Chinese premier and the European and American business communities. Um, Mr. Gilligan, how do you think these kind of interactions could help? We provide very similar recommendations or the expression of the hope of American business in China, and that is help us find the way to remain compliant and do business that meets um, national security and law enforcement expectations, but then keeps as broad as possible the commercial lane. We don't want... Um, broad definitions of those previous things to narrow what could appropriately be commercial opportunity. What we also say to both sides is that there should be equality of opportunity. If one country can go and invest and uh, take advantage of market opportunities in their uh, counterpart country, those opportunities should exist for the other side as well. Mm -hmm. And so there should be more uh, equanimity in that relationship. And so we certainly uh, champion and applaud, but look for additional reform and opening here in China. We, and this applies to both sides as well, we also look for clarity of regulation and consistency in its implementation. It's tough for business to operate in an opaque environment. We need to know how to comply, and we need to know uh, where we can uh, expand on commercial opportunity. Are you hearing positive response from both sides? To be frank, I would say that the U.S., uh, the new administration, has shown uh, much open-mindedness, but they're also very new in you know, this term that just began on January 20. So uh, it's going to take time for us and them to get deeper into conversation. Mm -hmm. I would like to give credit to uh, China government for lots of opportunity to engage at a high level. You mentioned a few of the meetings with the NDRC and yeah. the Premier and others. And I have been in and anticipate being in future uh, very high level discussions as well to uh, continue to reflect the needs of American business here. We believe that we are the ballast in the relationship and we want to continue to be that stabilizing force that helps the two countries to be able to sort of take a step back and work on the other issues. Talking about timing, uh, you specifically mentioned this is the very beginning of this new administration. It's very understandable. And if we think about things in the other shoes, that would be the best way to communicate, isn't it? But on the other hand, there is an urgency about China-U.S. relations, about the right strategy being applied, not many steps that are toward uh, going to the opposite direction of having a constructive relationship, even though, Mr. Gilligan, from this part of the world, some look at it as negative. For example, uh, using human rights, uh, treatment, uh, punishment toward individuals, and now it's becoming reciprocal. And also, for example, of uh, punishing and listing the so-called uh, supercomputer uh, institutes uh, of China's uh, and put them on the blacklist. None of these are very constructed from this part of the world as believed. So, and we haven't seen much positive ones. Should people have much confidence about what Washington is doing, especially this new administration? Or are we going to see much more hostile uh, uh, reality than the earlier rosy, um, shall we say, expectations 
many will at least love to have compared to the earlier administration? This is a loaded question, but I just want to set the stage for you, sir. First of all, I think people and our two societies should have confidence in each other that we have managed a challenging relationship over uh, many years now. Indeed. Fifty years ago, with the um, implementation of ping pong diplomacy, we found a way to break the ice. Now, the ice has become thick again at this point in time, but there's no reason that we can't have uh, confidence to once again find the way forward. So uh, the use of uh, entity lists or blacklists by both sides, the criticism by both sides of each other's human rights records, all those things uh, accrue to politics, which we as a Chamber of Commerce uh, studiously avoid. We are acutely aware of the geopolitical implications of what happens, mostly so that we can stay out of them because we're not uh, equipped to deal with those issues. We are equipped to follow clear guidelines by government on how we should conduct our business in an ethical uh, way that contributes to society. Mm -hmm. So in that though, I would say that recently there have been some positive examples where some companies, and I, I can't name them, I don't want to call anybody out in particular, but some companies that have been identified and put on these lists have also gone through process that then released them to uh, allow greater commercial opportunity. So it's not all that everybody that goes on that list is just lost into, you know, the, sort of the black hole of, of having been named. Um, some of them are actually subject to additional scrutiny that they then pass and move forward with their businesses. The latest news about the cotton saying that has been such a big debate, uh, but that put us to a second thought about the global supply chain. We thought it was earlier only about high technology, but this time it could apply to everything. Quite frankly, I think that we are having challenges recognizing and accommodating very different ideologies uh, in the way that the U.S. and China um, approach society and governance. I would like to remind everyone, though, that these ideologies were not different uh, at the beginning of U.S.-China diplomatic relations. At Even time, more, probably. Indeed. And at that time, there was a recognition of the differences, but an idea that we would find a way forward recognizing those differences. So uh, now there's more, it seems to be more of an expectation that the other side yield to the ideology of the other. And frankly, that's not going to happen. We should get beyond that. We should get back to the way we started this very productive, beneficial relationship. If you listen to the new administration's uh, latest remarks, there has been a combination of words such as partnership, such as competition, uh, such as uh, uh, rivalry, all are being mentioned. And therefore, it's blurred as to which apply to which, at what circumstances, on what time. Shouldn't the two sides have this emergency of defining what exactly is the nature of this relationship? I think about this in the context of what I call the four C's. T's go ahead. A, B, C, you know, C. And so uh, one is conflict, which we all need to avoid at all costs. Uh, the other is confrontation, which frankly is going to happen and perhaps should happen as we disagree with the very different actions of the other side. Then there is competition, which I think is a great thing and we should embrace competition. As long as they're fair in both Absolutely. eyes. Absolutely, in, indeed. It needs to be equitable uh, in terms of the rules of the, the, you know, the competition. And then there is cooperation. So what's necessary is for us not to, I would say, uh, avoid all these things with the exception of conflict, uh, but to recognize that they're out there and then define each one. What are the things that are going likely to be in those categories? So where are those areas where we're likely to confront each other? Uh, because frankly, those have been a part of the diplomatic relations for so many decades. Mm -hmm. 
Some of them disappeared in the previous four-year administration, and now they've reappeared. And so everyone's like, oh, wait, why are we talking about these issues? Well, we've been talking about them for so many decades now. Let's just get used to it that that's a part of international diplomacy. Then uh, competition should be embraced because both sides have very vibrant economies, um, continental economies that will support innovation, research and development, and growth for the people of both countries. And then cooperation in areas like we talked about public health and in, um, you know, protection of the environment, in um, things like the governance of um, global monetary policy to the benefit of the global economy. Um, you know, there's so many areas where we can uh, cooperate. Now, I think there's also an exceptional opportunity as China's done exceptionally well uh, economically managing through the COVID-19 crisis, but also in, in going forward with a uh, sort of a new five-year plan and other things about the economy. The U.S. economic situation is also quite bright. There is um, For this year, significant know, growth, growth rate, happening, yeah. greater growth predicted, and will likely be the case for the next few years especially if one thinks about um, whatever size of the infrastructure package that comes into play. The same way that China drove uh, tremendous growth for decades with infrastructure investment, that's going to happen with reinvestment in infrastructure in the United States. So when we embrace competition, we can do so from a position of confidence that each of us has exceptional domestic opportunities, but then also um, more opportunity together. There needs to be an abandonment of the zero-sum mentality that I only win when you lose. It needs to be let's make the pie bigger and find ways to share it. Let's make the pie bigger and find ways to share it. That is according to the chairman of the American Chamber of Commerce in China, Greg Gilligan.